Hey everyone, it's Dylan. We're back again for another week here in the shop. Uh, this week we actually are finally going to be doing the installation for the copper and wenge door that we showed a little while back. <laughs> Joe's throwing silicone at Haley as she tries to film. Um, so we're, you're going to see that installation. Then we're also going to be pouring uh, resin between these two cottonwood slabs. Really nice stuff we got from GL Veneer and then we're going to keep working on the 4 inch thick table as well. So now we're going to head off to the job site, well the boys are, I'm going to stay here, but they're going to head off to the job site to install the jam of that copper and wenge door. So we're actually going to put the jam in first, we're going to test fit the door and then we're going to take the door out. Uh, the door will go in at a later date once we finish it, but we're going to kind of show you that whole process of putting the jam in. fit the jam on the door now here we're going to be taking the door out and putting a, a filler a temporary filler in we haven't finished the door and now there's all kinds of custom copper clad detailing that's going on this door we'll be taking the door to the cooper smith probably for two three weeks at least part went really well. Uh, the jam is in, the door fit really good, had a really smooth movement on that pivot hardware. Now we got to get it finished up with oil and take it to the coppersmith. So in the next clip here you're going to see us picking it up from them. Unfortunately we didn't get any footage at the coppersmith but I think it turned out pretty good. today to do our final installation of this absolutely amazing copper and wenge door that we've manufactured for an amazing client.
another pour, uh, of course, that we're very excited for. Uh, if you guys have been watching our channel for a while, you'll remember back at GL Veneer, we picked out a few cottonwood and willow burl slabs. Uh, this is the cottonwood here, and it's this is actually one slab. It kind of looks like two, but it is one slab, and it's very burly. Um, we're going to pour, I think it's 90 liters of resin we're going to mix up here. It's kind of this blue-green sort of turquoise resin, uh, but it should look really, really good. Okay, so you guys just watched us uh, pull the four inch thick table out of the mold. This is the first four inch thick pour we did on our water cool table. And by the looks of it, you can see there's basically zero bubbles that have cured on top. Like there's a couple there, a um, couple right here on top, but it's all gonna get the sheet off the surface. Now, one thing that I need to stress here is this is not possible under normal conditions. So if you buy your epoxy and you just pour it at room temperature with a regular mold, it's gonna crack and overheat. But if you look in the description, we've now released our plans for our water-cooled table. So it's, a, it's an aluminum table that has water piping going all underneath and it actually cools the resin as it cures. And that's why we're able to pull off these massive pores. So now I, know, I realize not everyone's going to do giant tables, but if you want to make cubes, more artistic, smaller things in really big volumes, you can use the water-cooled mold. been able to construct successfully our first liquid cooled table and we're gonna be offering some blueprints and plans on how to build your own liquid cooled table here so we're just getting started uh, uh, we use copper piping standard soldering methods and techniques and and I'll be putting together a complete set of blueprints and plans on how to build the liquid cooled table uh, the thing about soldering that I quite enjoy is it's a really basic, simple, standardized uh, method of practice. Uh, the tools involved, I mean, you've got a simple pipe cutter, works just as good as anything else. You've got your wire brush cleaners as well too. Uh, some solder, soldering paste, and a propane torch is all you need to get started to be able to assemble your own liquid ta cool table. And we look forward to offering a complete instructional set of plans on how to do this. Hey guys, so we're here again and we have another one of these bases. We've already made one of them. Uh, they actually interlock, so like that. They're kind of like a plus shape and they're for our circular table, which is right over here.
so I hope you guys enjoyed finally seeing that door get installed. We were pretty satisfied because we've been working on that for a long time and the clients were really pleased. They're actually going to have us do their dining table now for them so that's kind of cool. And then beside me here I have this new vacuum chamber that we just purchased. So a lot of you guys actually commented this and suggested that we try and use vacuum to remove all of the bubbles from our pores. So we do a pretty good job of that already but there is a few bubbles left sometimes. Um, so that's why we got this thing. So it's got a nice big chamber inside. We can fit one of our big Home Depot buckets in there and hopefully it works pretty good. So we will, we're just waiting for some oil to show up and then we'll show you how this thing works next week. <laughs> Why are we-